Hey everybody, we're back in the shop working on the Project Ute 300C. Today we're fixing electronical stuff so we can finally get it through inspection. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Andrew and this is the Make It and Break It YouTube channel where we take motorsports projects, cars, motorcycles, anything with an engine and run it through the entire build process for you from designing it to actually building it, to sending it on racetracks, adventures, anything else that seems fun at the time. So today we're in our Project Ute Chrysler 300C and we're trying to fix all the electronic niggles that we're having that'll prevent us from getting it through a state patrol inspection and emissions inspection so that we can get a license plate here in the state of Washington. So I'm sitting in the front seat right now because I'm pulling codes off that dashboard right over there, actually underneath the dashboard, but I'm pulling codes to make sure that we have everything. So right now the car is showing two is showing two things that'll stop us. We have a check engine light for a uh, coolant temperature sensor or a coolant coolant temperature sensor circuit problem. That's P0118 for those of you who are curious about the check engine light code. And then we have a, an airbag light. Um, so the airbag light will fail us at the state patrol inspection. The check engine light will fail us at the, uh, the check engine light will fail us at emissions inspections and we have to get both of those done before this thing gets a license plate and we can start doing the real build so what we're gonna do here is start from easiest to hardest and go fix this problem hopefully that's the plan anyway so first thing to do if you're having weird electronic problems on an LX chassis, that's your Dodge Chargers, Magnums, Chrysler 300Cs, stuff like that, is to go check your power distribution centers, your fuse boxes, and make sure everything's seated properly. Apparently these chassis are pretty notorious for fuses and relays coming a little bit loose and causing haywire, weird codes and stuff like that in your electronic system. So the easiest thing to go do first is go press on any of your front or rear power distribution modules. So we pressed on all the fuse boxes and let's see if that airbag light goes out. It went out momentarily, I would say, but looks like it's still there, and it's blinking at me, so not successful, it looks like. So that obviously didn't work. So we're on to sensor replacements, but first, the lady boss is here to have lunch, so I'm going to go have some delicious and terrible for me lunch. Catch you guys after that. Mmm, meatloaf. So we're back from eating delicious meatloaf sandwich for lunch. This place has an awesome restaurant. If you're ever in Seattle, show up at the shop. Literally Google the shop Seattle. Come have lunch, see all the sweet cars that are outside. Maybe you'll catch me working in the workshop. Anyway, we're back from eating lunch and apparently my stomach was affecting my head or something and I tried something I didn't try to do yet and I should have so one of the simplest things that could cause a circuit problem is the connector not seating properly so I went to go pull the connector harness and it just kind of slid right off the sensor on the on the engine and I don't think that's how that's supposed to go. At least I didn't know the time. I know it's not how it's supposed to go now. So I went and I pulled the connector harness and tried to put it on just a free hanging sensor I had. I had my replacement sensor up there. Tried to put it on the free hanging replacement sensor and it wouldn't stay connected. Like you just slide it right back off, which was a little bit weird. And it tells me this connector, um, that this connector from the harness was not sealing on my new sensor correctly, so I had no reason to believe it was sealing on my old sensor correctly either. And so I, I fiddled with it a little bit and figured out it just needed to be pushing pretty hard. Like, I was worried about breaking the sensor here. 
I need to be pushing pretty hard and then it had a little locking mechanism that would keep it in there and keep it on the retention element of the sensor. So that's kind of what I did. I pushed it back on the sensor that was currently installed in the car and pushed it real hard and got the locking mechanism on it and then made sure it wasn't just sliding off real easy and the check engine light went away. So, uh, pro tip here. If you're having a connection problem, make sure your sensors are connected. I, I would say that's the first thing before you go buy and spare parts like I did or running around looking for extra fuses and crap like I did. Just make sure they're actually connected if you can reach them and this engine coolant temperature sensor is, is right there. It's, it's right there, it's easy to go grab. Unfortunately, we now have another check engine light showing up and it is check engine light P0520 is what I believe it is. It's the oil pressure sensor switch on this 5.7 liter Hemis. Um, it's not an uncommon problem, but it does require us to remove the alternator and pull the belts and all that jazz. So we're gonna try and fix that today. I have the sensor here. I had seen that code before. It's just more of an intermittent code right now. But I have the I have the sensor. I'm gonna go replace it while I have the time and I have the motivation to do so. It requires a little bit of effort, but I think it'll be worth it. Hopefully. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go get this car up and see if we can't get to that sensor. Supposedly you can get to it without pulling the alternator. I don't know if I actually believe that's true. We'll give it a shot. Sidebar. Look at this sweet ridiculousness that came in today. Ridiculous. Got a matching chair over on the side of the lamp. It's from Burning Man. Oh, really? Apparently, it's from Burning Man. Cool. Okay, everyone. End of the day, I gotta start packing up, put things away so I can go like have dinner and uh, play nice with the, the lady boss. Um, you can see behind me, I managed to put everything back together without destroying it irreparably. Um, and theoretically, everything's running fine right now. Uh, so I worked about six hours a day. Sorry for the lack of, uh, sorry for the lack of time lapse, but my time lapse machine broke, so, and there wasn't a whole lot to look at. I was mostly just cursing and trying to get to two bolts for about three hours. So I worked six hours. I replaced a grand total of zero sensors. Um, that oil pressure sending unit sensor thing is a pain in the ass. I am impressed with anyone who can ever get that thing out. But let's go take a look. we get in the car right now you see no check engine light no throttle light I mean airbag lights still on I haven't figured that shit out yet but that's coming I gotta go get a different sensor to figure out what's going wrong with the airbags right now uh, I'm not entirely certain what it is but we fixed it by doing nothing more than jiggling some connections so while it might be a little disappointing to have replaced literally nothing the car's fixed, and I have spare parts in case I ever need them again. So that's not terrible. Uh, it looks like what happened is whatever accident this thing was in, uh, it either jogged loose a couple of these connections, or people at the salvage auction, and when they open it up and look at it, they jiggled everything loose. And so you had to just go reseat these things. And it ended up being fine, which is pretty cool, especially for as old as this motor is. A word of warning to you people with electronic trunk latches, Make sure if you're gonna disconnect the battery, you physically restrain the trunk from closing. Mine closed all on its own when I had it up, jacked up, uh, which meant I had to look like this. Crawling through to release it once I brought it everything back down. So unless you wanna look like a Vienna sausage forced through a thimble hole, maybe, you know, take a little bit of precaution there. That's pretty much it for today. We had an underwhelming but successful day where we replaced nothing and fixed two or three things. So, cool, I guess. Um, 
last little bit before we can get this thing inspected right now is we've got to fix that airbag light and I kind of want to replace the front bumper since it's all crapped anyway and I have a new one just sitting around here. So I'll probably get that done hopefully next time once I get a better scanner to figure out what the airbag light is. And that's about it for us here today. Thanks for watching. My name's Andrew and this has been another Project Ute 300C episode here on Make It and Break It where the only question we ever answer about a project really is why not build it? Catch you guys later. Underwhelming but successful. Sounds like a bad Top Gear motto.